Hello, so this is uh, part one of our five-part series. Uh, last time we spoke about uh, three points that this series can be applied in any language or for any language uh, for us to actually put it into practice and our motivation. Now today in this first part we're going to learn uh, three skills, three methods for learning uh, any language. The first one is to try to think in pictures. Now what does that mean? Think in pictures. Well actually thinking in pictures might come natural to us. We might uh, be thinking of an idea, but with that idea we might be thinking of something that we saw. Um, most times people will say don't translate in your head, but then of course that's difficult. How do we stop ourselves from translating. So instead of saying, don't translate, let's focus on thinking in pictures. Now, that's how we don't translate. We think about the word in the foreign language, and then we think of the picture to connect it. So you might be reading something, or you might be watching or hearing something, and there's a word that you don't understand. The first step. Go to a search engine, look it up, find a picture for that word. You might look up various, uh, or you might find various pictures, but you will see which one maybe is most suitable. Now, of course, this is easier done for verbs, for nouns, uh, possibly even for adjectives. But it doesn't mean that every verb, every noun, it will be easy to find a picture. Uh, prepositions also can maybe be easy, uh, depending on the preposition. Uh, but conceptually, it might be difficult to understand what the picture is communicating. So what can you do? Well, after you find the picture that you think is connected to the meaning of that word, then you can look for the definition of the word. Now, that doesn't mean look for the definition in your mother tongue. It means look for the definition in your target language. So if you're learning English, look for the definition in English. If you're learning French, look for the definition in French. Now if you are a beginner, well of course this will be a little bit more challenging. But even still, when you look up a definition, usually there are synonyms with that definition. So write down those synonyms. So now you have a picture, you have your word, and you have some synonyms. And as you improve, you will ad adapt the picture to the word. You might find another picture that is a more suited. So instead of cue cards or, or flash cards, uh, use pictures. Try to think in pictures. Now the second one, uh, let me get that here. So number two is to identify key words. Now what are key words? Key words most of the time can be our subject. What are we talking about? Can usually also be the action. So for example, uh, I sleep. A very short sentence, we have both the subject and the action. Those are some key words. Now in a longer sentence, we want to identify what could be the key word. Sometimes we might know what it means, sometimes it might be a new word. And that's when we look up our picture. But look for those key words to begin to understand the context. This is how we begin to think in the language. So look for those key words. And if you're a little bit more advanced, look for those key expressions. And likely you will see those key words or key expressions in the future. Or perhaps if you need to explain what you're reading or explain what you're learning, you can use those key words and those key phrases. So identify key words. Now number three is to use those keywords or key phrases 
to identify or understand the structure of the language. Some languages are subject, object, verb. Others are subject, verb, object. So identify the structure of the language because when you need to speak in the language, you will, identif you will be using patterns. And then within those patterns, there might be a certain rhythm. So you might use the structure when you're speaking in that language. So instead of translating in your mind, we want to find pictures, we want to identify keywords, and we want to uh, use those keywords to identify patterns or grammatical structure in the language. Now those were three. Three key points that we can remember, three methods of learning another language. So see how you do. See if you can put it into practice this month. Let me know what you think. Uh, write a comment. Send me a message. Uh, give it a thumbs up. Give it a thumbs down. Uh, do what you want. Uh, but please give me some type of feedback. Let me know uh, if you found this video helpful. And for next time, we'll look at uh, three more. Okay? Thank you so much.